Hey everybody, welcome back to Monroe Live. We have a special guest today, Kim Mathers from RE. And we're in the booth here at CES, CES 2023. A lot of amazing technology here. And Kim's gonna give us a little overview of her technology. It's really cool, it's a corner module. And go ahead and give us a little overview. Sure, thank you. So uh, again, I'm with RE Automotive and our core technology is what we call the RE Corner, um, which is right here at the American Axle booth at um, CES. And what's novel about the ReCorner is that it takes a lot of the core function um, of an electric vehicle and packages it into this compact module. So um, this particular one is what we call P7, so it's valid for class three to five uh, medium duty trucks. And this entire middle section fits within the chassis. So yeah. not only is it incredibly compact from a packaging perspective, um, but what's novel about our ReCorners is that it's fully by wire, so drive steering, braking functions. So no mechanical connections between driver and corners, between corners. So it really enables a lot of modularity and flexibility with yeah. respect to the electric vehicles that yeah. will eventually uh, sit on top. Yeah, the first thing that really sticks out to me is to see half of a steering rack. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing a steering rack go across an entire car. So you'd, you'd be able to have four wheel steering mm -hmm. on a vehicle. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So again, this is a P7 recorner and you can see we have um, a three in one drive unit from American Axle in the center and the steering actuation that you mentioned. So this corner, when we repeat it four times on a EV platform, it becomes all wheel drive, all wheel steer. Um, but again, our focus on scalability and modularity, not all of our customers require all of that function, right? Our recorners are really all about right sizing, right functioning vehicles. So if somebody doesn't need that, we simply delete the drive unit, we simply delete the actuation, um, the steering actuation, um, and we can also provide front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, um, or front wheel steer only. Yeah, and what I love about what I'm seeing here from a manufacturing perspective is a lot of casting. So. I also see a locator for when you're locating into the body, whether it's a four-way or two-way, because with four individual modules, you may have to deal with getting them all aligned correctly. And I also see a plate heat exchanger for your drive unit. Can you explain a little bit about what type of volumes you wanna get? So rather than having you know, 5,000 units here and 5,000 units here, if you have this corner module, you can really get some scale, hundreds and hundreds of thousands. What are you looking at for scale for these you know, all the tooling purchases for this. Sure, uh, so a lot to talk about there. I'm actually glad you pointed out the, uh, the locating. Our corner modules are designed to be fully replaceable. So um, they can be removed and replaced uh, on a vehicle in operation in under an hour. So it's a mechanical uh, changing the hardware and then there's some calibration involved um, to uh, properly um, tell the corner what yeah. position on the vehicle it is. So. Um, again, sc scale ability and modularity, super key. So we have uh, 10,000 units of capacity existing today in the UK um, facility in Coventry. Um, we have our first US manufacturing footprint is going to be in Austin, Texas, um, just north of the city in Pflugerville. Uh, and that'll be 10,000 units on one shift. But we have a very uh, modular approach to manufacturing. So um, our assembly lines at our integration centers can be repeated um, in a very short period of time. And our intent is to be located close to our customers. Yeah, I really like the geometry because of how low profile this is. So this is intended to be where the floor can go above this. Yeah, is that absolutely. Yeah. So the load floor will sit just on top of this um, uh, drive unit. And if you think about sort of legacy architectures, where you have powertrain, um, leaf springs, uh, all sorts of mechanical components that load floors typically have to sit on top of. That re relationship doesn't exist here with recorner and X by wire, right? The load floor does not have to be up and over um, those drive units. So that really enables us to get low um, and of course clear uh, between corner modules. Yeah, so. and I love this from a serviceability perspective because sometimes large trucks or, or vans are really hard to service if you have a drive unit really far inside. The fact that if you have an issue at a high mileage situation with maybe the steering system, you can drop the whole unit out and then service it very easy or replace it with a unit and send the, send the corner module out to get refurbished. Yeah. I really like that. that, that you know, Absolutely. Technology. So yeah. not only the advantages in terms of like accessibility for serviceability and the advantages for uh, design for manufacturing, yeah. but what it really allows um, our fleet owners to do is to eliminate any root causing yeah. whatsoever. You know, you can remove and replace a recorner 
very quickly. And if there's any root causing troubleshooting involved, you can do it offline, but most importantly, get that vehicle back out on the road. Yeah, um, very cool. So I have some questions about tuning and uh, a tuning and calibration to the specific use case. So I see that you have, uh, you know, sensors for suspension, suspension jounce. You'll have all the connections for your steering system. You'll have all of your speed sensing and all of your controls for your motor. How are you going to work with uh, a client that's going to integrate these into their truck and calibrate it to their specific use case, load case, and different scenarios like that? Yeah, I'm actually glad you asked about that. So um, again, the the modularity uh, in our design is a real key enabler yeah. to how we can access uh, a very wide range of particular applications. So um, what sits inboard of the suspension, this part of the recorner, um, is uh, uh, a key component of our development. This tends to stay quite consistent for any P7 application, yeah. so class three to five. Um, again, we talked about if you want to delete the drive unit, if you want to delete the steering, but for the most part, um, the inboard part stays fairly consistent. And of course, um, the control, the X by wire control, uh, a lot of consistency and yeah. commonality between applications. Um, however, on the outboard part, um, that's really where a lot of the application specific yeah. um, engineering can happen. And we're talking, of course, uh, significantly less development time resources. So this is where we can uh, work with customer to their unique needs yeah. and still deliver recorners that can suit their needs yeah. in, in condensed development times. Yeah. Now I have a question about brakes. So Grace, why don't you come around here, this side? So I'm used to big, big drum brakes on, on heavy duty trucks. Now, the big advantage with electric vehicles is that you get a lot of regen, so your brake yes. service is much less. I'm noticing a fixed caliper here. This is typically something you'd see on a higher performance vehicle. So a really nice braking system with EPB on all corners. So you could have electric park brake on all corners. Does this eliminate the need for a park fall inside the drive unit? Or do you know if there's still a park mechanism inside the drive unit? Um, I actually am not certain on whether or not there's a park fall inside the drive unit, but absolutely on the four park yeah. brakes and the advantages on the foundation brake sizing. Um, of course, with four electric drive units, um, and the regenerative braking yeah. that we have um, there, we're finding significant advantages in terms of energy efficiency as well. Yeah. Um, and with regards to the, the braking, we've been working with uh, Brembo yeah. um, braking and we've announced a partnership um, with them to yeah. assist. Do you have any data on uh, the increased brake life with the uh, regen braking? Um, because oftentimes with new EVs, uh, the brake life is extended by hundreds of thousands of miles. And then you have to do use higher end rotors. Are you using ferretic nitro carburized rotors? Do you know that? I do not know oh, uh, the conversation of the of the rotors, but of course, what you say absolutely, and yeah. it depends on um, specific yeah. if uh, I was use an, case. If I was an owner of a fleet of vehicles, if you could pitch me much lower <laughs> brake uh, yes. brake wear and brake service. And then no oil changes, no fluid. Absolutely, it's very this, significant TCO savings. This would be phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. To that point, I mean, we are definitely getting away from um, you know standard uh, preventative maintenance schedules, right? Yeah. So a significant advantage beyond the OTA um, updates is smart PMs yeah. uh, throughout. And what I really like about what I'm seeing here is this reminds me more of what I see in a high-end Rivian. So we tore down a Rivian recently, and it's a double wishbone suspension with forged links. These look like cast pieces, you know, cast knuckle, cast upper, cast lower. It really is kind of refreshing to see higher end componentry and manufacturing methodology applied at a, uh, usually a market that sees stamped steel axles and lower end componentry. Can you go into a little bit about the thought process of using primarily aluminum for this? Uh, well, I mean, of course, weight savings and performance is yeah. important um, as an enabler for energy efficiency. But um, I mean, I guess at a high level with respect to, to business model and the product that we're bringing to market to enable um, fleets to really drive down their TCO, not only drive down their TCO, but also improve yeah. um, what they're getting out of the vehicle. Um, you know, we see that the uh, commercial electrical view vehicle, commercial electric vehicle market thus far has been fairly um, inorganic with incentives and, and limited um, available products, right? We see that products powered by RE are going to be able to deliver um, much more to fleet um, operators yeah. um, when they come to market in terms of reduction of cost ownership and yeah. what they can get out of it. 
Well, this is so cool. Uh, thanks for running through all of this for us today. Is there anything else you'd like to add about what you're looking, what's your horizon for the next two to three years? Do you look to have start manufacturing soon? Do you have any clients signed up? Can you kind of go over you, yeah, how the business is going? Yeah, absolutely. So 2023 is going to be um, a big year for RE Automotive. We'll be in market second half of this year. Um, so we've talked a little about our um, customers for having vehicles powered by RE and test fleets um, with customers. And that'll be through uh, a couple of products. We've announced a P7 box truck, which is a class three and we've announced in partnership with um, Morgan Olson and EABX from JB Pico, mm -hmm. uh, a Proxima powered by RE, um, class five walk-in van. Um, this is great. Well, Kim, thank you for running through all of this thank with you. me today. Thanks for Ho stopping by. Hopefully our viewers get some, some value out of this. I thought this was really interesting. A lot more to come from CES 2023. Thank you for tuning in, really appreciate it.